Promise program and its deadly effects. That's the focus of tonight's angle. The more we learn about the school shooting in Florida, the more it appears that a Broward County invention may have played a role in what happened. And what am I talking about? In 2013, Broward County and their new school superintendent, Robert Runcie, had a novel idea. Lower school expulsions and arrests by reducing police involvement. Sounds simple. They called it the Promise Program. Preventing recidivism through opportunities, mentoring, intervention, support, and education. It's quite an acronym. You see, in 2011 into 2012 school year, Broward had the highest public school-related arrest record in the state. More than 1,000 kids in that year alone were arrested. The Obama administration Education Secretary Arne Duncan and Attorney General Eric Holder were so impressed by the Promise Plan that it inspired their own new national guidelines. As it stands, far too many students, far too many students across this country are diverted from the path to success by unnecessarily harsh discipline policies and practices that exclude them from school for really minor infractions. Too often, so-called zero tolerance policies, however well-intentioned they might be, make students feel unwelcome in their own schools. They disrupt the learning process, and they can have significant and lasting negative effects on the long-term well-being of our young people. Well, I'd say a violent kid whose outbursts are tolerated week after week, leading years later to a school shooting, also has lasting negative effects on young people and disrupts the learning process, Eric. But I digress. The Obama bureaucrats incentivized Broward to go even further, awarding the district nearly $54 million in grants to improve the lives of students in poverty and students of color. The standard to show that their lives are actually improving? Fewer arrests at schools, less police involvement, fewer disciplinary problems, at least on paper. So school administrators were basically paid to deal with student crime in-house and keep the cops off the premises. Had Nicholas Cruz been arrested or charged by police for bringing knives or bullets to school or for other various infractions, threats and so forth, he might not have been able to buy that gun he used to kill 17 people. When CNN's Jake Tapper pressed Sheriff Scott Israel about his office's approach to student crimes, he said this. What you're referring to is the Promise Program, and it's, it's giving the school, the school uh, has the ability under certain circumstances not to call the police, not to get the police involved on misdemeanor offenses, and take care of it within the school. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an excellent program. Well, what did we expect he was going to say? Until it helps a mass killer maintain a clean record up to the time of his shooting, that is. Broward County Sheriff Union President Jeff Bell revealed this to me last week. They don't want the police officers making arrests on campus, and they don't want the drugs to be found on campus, and they don't want the warrants to be served on campus because it looks like there's bad stats at the school. So I place a lot of blame on the school board with that and some of the programs that they've initiated with the state attorney and the sheriff's office in the years past. For example, the Promise program. The problem is with them, when that program started, we took all discretion away from the law enforcement officers to an effect an arrest if we choose to. That was stunning. Now, Broward School Superintendent Robert Runcie, Sheriff Israel, and the Obama bureaucrats that created this perverse incentive to hide student criminality or downplay it have a lot of explaining to do. By turning Broward schools and those across the nation into these social justice petri dishes, they may have facilitated a lunatic, and their soft policies have turned our schools into soft targets. And that's the angle. Joining me now for a reaction from New York City is Shavar Jeffries, president of Democrats for Education Reform and a supporter of the Promise Program. And also in New York is Michael Faulkner. He's a Promise critic, a former teacher at King's College and Liberty University and pastor of New Horizon Church. 
in New York City. It's great to see both of you gentlemen. I want to go through a list of incidents that occur in uh, schools down in Broward County that qualify for the Promise program, meaning law enforcement won't be involved. Here's the list. Alcohol-related incidents, assault, threat, bullying, disruption on campus, drug use, possession under the influence, drug paraphernalia, possession, false accusation against school staff, fighting, mutual combat, harassment, theft, trespassing, vandalism, and damage to property. Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Michael. Uh, what about this? I mean, they, it led to a big drop in arrests. I can tell you they had 1,056 arrests from 2011 to 2012. Skip forward to 2015 to 2016. I think we have the full screen. That number goes down to 392. The kids started really behaving well, I guess. Well, yeah, obviously they didn't start behaving well, but we started seeing less uh, arrests and therefore the numbers go down. It's a numbers game that we are playing. And unfortunately, when you play the numbers game, ultimately you lose because those 17 lives that were lost can be directly attributed to the lower standards that were created and the setting of the tone that actually lowered the standards on what law enforcement should be involved with. Now, I... Uh, was a juvenile detention uh, uh, chaplain in New York City. I understand, I've worked with children who have had troubles and troubled backgrounds and so right. forth. I understand, I get it. Every kid doesn't need to be thrown in jail for their of first infraction not. or the second infra infraction. But when you set a tone and you begin to allow school officials to deal with all of those specific issues, you are setting us up, all of us up, yeah. for a, a catastrophic problem, which we saw. Shabar. Uh, I'm going to call BS on this. This is frankly absurd. Uh, the President Obama guidance was designed to deal with minor infractions at the school level. Uh, so the kind of activities that are the everyday sort of activity we see from kids, maybe it's a low level after school fight, low level vandalism. These are issues that are not law enforcement issues. These are issues where school personnel, teachers should work with young people to keep them on the right path. That's very different from what we had in the shooter in Florida uh, who trafficked and assault weapons, who was found on school grounds with weapons, uh, who multiple uh, uh, reports went to the FBI and did go to law enforcement about this young person's inclination toward violence. Uh, and the real fundamental problem we have here is that we have a culture of readily access uh, to assault weapons, where this young man could go and purchase uh, well, an assault weapon gone, as if he brought a bag of potato though. chip. Yeah, Shavar, I understand that argument, uh, and I understand it well. However, had he been arrested, he would not have been able to purchase a weapon. Then you should or ask the Trump weapons. FBI why they didn't arrest him when they got multiple reports uh, that this right. young man was making what, violent threats. Right. And what we're which saying. Which was after he what, was expelled at school. And what so parents, it was a school based what, issue. What, what parents have told me about from Broward is that the push here is to minimize at all costs involvement with the police. Because if you show a disparate impact on minority kids, versus non-minority kids when disciplinary matters. Guess what Eric Holder said? Remember that Remember that big speech he gave? And what everyone took from that was, you could be subject to a federal civil rights investigation if they see that there's a disparate impact in discipline. That's what's on the minds of well, these that's school because administrators. We have, that, that's They're because very we have afraid of that. But that's because we have a history for nonviolent offenses of African Americans and Latino kids being uh, disproportionately suspended and expelled for low level offenses that white kids uh, receive other types of interventions for. That's what that was about. That is very different from when there's credible reason to believe that a young person may engage no, no, in no, deadly but, violence. That is fundamentally Rossi, different. A, a, a low Rossi, level after school fight or Arnie vandalism. Duncan. Shavar, and Michael, you can get Arnie Duncan, the education secretary for Obama. He, he and Runcie were like totally on the same page. And in fact, the Promise program was the inspiration for what Eric Holder announced in January of 2014. This was a, a, a focusing on school discipline and a racial disparity. And the goal was reduce the involvement of police because there, you had been seeing these disparities. That is impacts. correct for low and level offenses. Correct. Yes, it, we it, should it, not suspend kids for low level offenses. This is offenses. considered low level. This stuff is considered low well, level. This kid no, was expelled no before program. these very reasons. Right, and clearly, clearly, this 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 incident with uh, with the the Cruz case is falls outside of that. There were a lot of balls dropped. There were a lot of people that dropped a lot of balls, and there's a lot of quote unquote blame to go around. But we have.
have to get back on track now. Where do we go from here? I Here's think we, we, I think we, we, we have to talk about what we're going to do going forward to prevent this from ever happening. We've got to make schools safer. We've got to do everything that we can do to make those environments as safe as well, they can yeah. be. Well, how about this? I have yeah. an idea. How about that? Just set real simple. If you're threatening people, and if you bring bullets in a backpack, and Hello. if you if and you talk about like you're going to shoot up a school, right. you should be off campus, and you should be. And the young man was expelled. So if well, you want to start yeah, expelling expelled. fourth grade kids no, 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 because expelled. they get a little basic fight, no, no, no. The, the, there's should, nothing in the Obama government. There's that's nothing silly. in the Obama sure, guidance no, that precluded. That. But there's that's, uh, a, that's a you know. I, but there's it's a nothing sweet in the Obama trick. But it's not what we're talking. There's about. nothing in the Obama guidance that precluded a school official from making a referral to a cop if they thought this young man was going to kill people. That is very basic. But the but but you, but you, if they the thought he was going to engage in violence, they could have made a referral to the police officer. There's right. nothing Shamar, Obama guys that The atmosphere that. that was created, this is what I'm trying to say. It's really simple. The atmosphere at that school was keep it keep it on the lowdown. Keep it keep this stuff under wraps because we don't want to go back to the reputation we had before with a thousand arrests. And this the, kid's a problem, it, shuttle him off somewhere the real else. Problem That's here. what's going I'm on here. And I'm calling BS on this attempt to divert from I mean, the real like, problem, all, which is this young man could buy BS. an assault so weapon like he's buying okay. a bag of potato chips and, and murder young people in school <laughs> in a matter of minutes. That is the okay. real problem. All right. Well, do you do you think that, let me, uh, Michael, do you think that the schools across the country generally have racist disciplinary policies? Do you, do you believe that? I think there's a history of racist di uh, 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 discipline policies in schools, yes, and the criminal okay. justice system. I, I absolutely do. Okay, However, so it's all racist. Okay, do you agree? No, 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 I say it was racist. Obviously, you have been saying very little of American history around race. If you don't think there's a long history of discriminatory discipline in our public education system, are you filled with brown versus education? Are you filled with white versus black education? Are you familiar with the history of this country around Jim Crow and segregation? Thank you. 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 Thank you.